Hey everyone, I just want to put together a quick tutorial on how I created this 360 panoramic animation. Um, it's on YouTube and it works on other devices as well, such as Gear VR and probably other content for VR applications. Um, to begin, you first want to go to uh, Chaos's group. Uh, this link here, they recently re released a guide to virtual reality. Uh, they released it this month, December 2015, and it's very informative and is very useful for those who are just getting started, but it's a little different um, than the method that I use to upload to YouTube. I found that the method here doesn't exactly work with YouTube, um, so with that being said, uh, I'll quickly demonstrate the differences between the two. In the guides version is basically going to set you up to render uh, side by side, top bottom animations, and you will basically have to take your outputs, bring it into an application such as After Effects, and uh, lay it out with a top bottom rendering. And this does work with Gear VR and uh, probably other content as well. Um, you can read through the guide and find out. And the difference is basically um, th when your setup here is going to have your output 3840 by 960 and when you use a V-Ray stereoscopic just by going to create helpers V-Ray uh, V-Ray stereoscopic and create a uh, this helper in your scene it's basically going to uh, split your rendering into the left eye and the right eye when you turn on the adjust resolution and uh, this is useful for the VR content and another setting that you'll have to set up is uh, spherical panoramic and panorama and you want your override FOR, FOV to uh, 360 and your vertical field of view to 180. And once that is done, you're going to um, go ahead and save out your output through uh, the V-Ray frame buffer. I found that to work best and separating your channels especially if you have render elements uh, I did not see it actually work when I turn on the render output under the common tab for V-Ray or 3D Max actually because what happens when it renders is that it will have a final output of 3840 by 960 whereas the frame buffer will be 7680 by 960 so that's something to keep in mind um, the difference that I have done is that I've rendered out 3840 by I believe it was 1920 and that will give you an image aspects ratio of 2.0 and that is what you want what will happen now, um, actually, you do want to turn off the stereoscopic helper um, so that it doesn't split the rendering output to two different eyes. But what happens now is your file output will be, uh, let me show you real quick, a single eye. And this is what I actually use to upload to YouTube what you're going to want to do and I'll provide the link as well is um, you want to download uh, a 360 metadata tool provided by Google and this tool will import metadata into your video so that it works with YouTube so then what happens in your video um, you you will basically upload the video with this new metadata 
and YouTube will recognize that metadata and it will work exactly as it should uh, for what you've seen in the uh, animation that I created and that is pretty much it um, so yeah the most important uh, elements is basically making sure that your V-Ray camera is set up to spherical panorama with 360 and 180 for vertical of course you can you know alter any changes that you need um, that works best for you um, you can also experiment with setting up the guide method enabling the V-Ray stereoscopic parameters and adjusting the resolution uh, I also ch changed my eye distance to 2.5 you could experiment with uh, your scene and see what values work best for you. Uh, I believe the tutorial actually or the guide says that uh, 2.0 to 6.5 I believe is the uh, the ranges that are uh, most useful so it, it all depends on your scene and what results you get so um, yeah that's pretty much it um, feel free to contact me if you have any questions this method is fairly new and I'm sure the guide will help you a lot so um, yeah just good luck and let me know how things go